is so cool. So this is Taco Tuesday Girl. Hey, I know her. Yeah. Um. This is not boring. Um. I agree with that. Um. My long form unedited conversation. I love it. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Welcome back to Insanely Chill. This is another episode uh, from my backyard. We're here um, in the beautiful outdoors. And guess what? No sunshine today. <laughs> Take that. All of you little fuckers in the comments talking about the shadow. Oh my God, it looks like he's... I think, you know, I think it maybe looked like I was sucking on a penis, perhaps. The shadow. It was me sitting right here in the beautiful outdoors wonderful scenery ryan set up set up this beautiful shot and everything looked peaceful serene i would say i said it was i'd say it was a great vibe personally that's what i thought and then all the comment and so i was kind of excited for the episode to come out because i'm like well it's the first time i'm talking about being a dad and we have this new backdrop it's kind of nice it's changing energy let's see anytime we change the show or the feel or we change something it's it's fun to see how the audience will react to that because it feels different when you're doing it. So it's like, oh, maybe this will resonate with people. Who knows? Everyone's been saying, you know, the set is not chill enough. It looks like it looks like a shitty news show, you know? Bring it back to how it used to be with just you. And so I did that a year later. Finally, I sit down and I pour out my heart to you about what it's like to be a dad for the first time holding my baby son in my arms, having him sleep on my chest, all these wonderful, amazing feelings that are going on, and this roller coaster, this wild roller coaster. I'm talking about my wife, how amazing she is, the, the actual birth, what a, in, what a horrendous miracle it is, all these things, pouring my heart out to you. And what do the comments say? Oh, look at the shadow. It looks like he's sucking on a penis. Look at his big nose in the shadow. It looks like his nose is so big. <laughs> big nose guy and he's and he's and he's sucking on a dick. Look at him slobbing on that knob. I don't know if anyone actually said that, but they were you know, they were reminiscent of that. Look at him look at him dumbing look at him look at him dumbing off that absolute shadow penis. Oh my god, he's giving shadow dome. No, he's giving Shadow Dome. Dude, stop. <laughs> Dude, you're sucking off that absolute shade penis. So I didn't appreciate that. Oh, we're back. <laughs> what a preposterous time for the sun to come back out right there. And so I believe, I believe we're back. My Shadow Twin here. I'm podcasting, and in the shadow realm, apparently I'm giving head. Anyways, I don't appreciate that, okay? So, no more of that shit. If I'm going to sit here in this beautiful scene and pour my heart out to you, I don't want any more cheeky comments about dome, head. What are, what are you doing? What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Wow, dude, I just... <laughs> I can't... How do I even explain what just happened to the audio listeners? Is how I'm... Is what I'm wondering right now. <laughs> Get out of the fucking frame. <laughs> so as I'm talking about this... Uh, again, perfect timing on that. As I'm talking about how I don't want any cheeky comments, Ryan prances outside in a little Cupid costume. <laughs> what is this? Fucking get your spandex-wearing ass out of the shot, dude. <laughs> Nobody signed up to see that. Okay. What are these? Cupid just delivered two things to me here. I'm obsessed with you cards. 
The first one says, Dear Cody, roses are red, violets are blue. Kenny won't stop talking about boner pills. It's becoming a serious problem. Cody, you need to come back to the studio. He hasn't left the chair in months, and last week he bit someone. With love, Izzy. <laughs> this is a, hmm, some kind of poem that was. I think it's supposed to rhyme. Um, I thank you so much, Izzy, for the for the note. I appreciate that. Uh, I will I will be coming back sooner than you know. Well, no, I'll be coming back soon. Not sooner than you know. I'm taking my time, to be honest. I was talking about this. I recorded, um, I actually recorded my first video yesterday. And I was talking about paternity leave. And I'm like, it's kind of awesome. First of all, paternity leave is amazing because it's just the only thing I'm worried about is my child and spending time with my family. So it's like you wake up, it's like you just make him happy and then you go for lunch or do whatever. You know, but the other good thing about paternity leave is that nobody bothers you. Nobody hits you up about any stupid shit. You know how much stupid shit you just get hit up? You know, I'm not trying to be negative here. I'm really not. But there's just a lot of superfluous shit. You know, people just email just to feel busy. You know what I'm saying? How's that for a hot take? People, they'll email and they want to do coffee just to feel like something is happening when really it's not really being productive at all and you're kind of not paying attention to the things that are really important. None of that shit is a thing when you're on paternity leave. It's amazing. People just have this sort of like understanding that, oh, he's off doing doing that. I'm not going to bug him, you know? Sorry, I do. So nobody... <laughs> yeah, you're using the bathroom. <laughs> it just took longer than I thought it was. Did I miss anything? Yeah, you missed the craziest shit. What happened? We had this fully grown man come Stranger? outside in a skin-tight spandex red oh. costume, and he shot me with this arrow. Are you okay? I'm good. I mean, it was a little bit scarring. Sounds pretty romantic, though. Kind of. It was kind of romantic, honestly. Wish I could have met him. Sorry. Not to interrupt. Um, no, you seem like a nice guy. I don't know, a little bit like, a little bit like he's scampering around back there, you know. <laughs> he's probably didn't really know what he was supposed to do. He's kind of like skipping and scampering back there. Maybe he'll come back. Yeah, maybe. But anyways, I read, I I got two cards from him, which is oh. pretty cool. What they say? One from Izzy. Okay. Uh, talking about how Kenny is kind of stuck in the studio, and I think he has a. It kind of seems like he has a chronic boner. He's been taking blue pills a lot. Yeah, it seems like to kill time. Yeah. Between, yeah. like, he's just been taking boner pills. Oh, shit. That's and, in the office. Yeah. So inappropriate, first of all. Tell HR about that for yeah, sure. I'll talk to him. Um, but yeah, I am kind of worried about him. Uh, so, Izzy, thank you for the card. Let him know that I'm on my way back eventually and just keep taking the boner pills because the thing is, you can't really just cold turkey those things. <laughs> You'll die. <laughs> you have to taper off. You have to taper off, all right? You can't just go in from having a rock hard bone dog. 24 hours a day to all of a sudden being soft. Right. You know? Right. All, like all the blood rushing back into your body like that? Yeah. That'll kill a man. That's what they say about antidepressants. I guess it goes for boner pills too. Yeah. You can't just stop. Yeah. Cold turkey. And then I was talking about how uh, I'm on paternity leave and it's awesome because nobody, there's no bullshit. I can't wait. There's no bullshit. Nobody hits you up about anything. I can't wait. It's awesome. There's no fucking... <laughs> Listen, I appreciate people hitting me up. I feel like I'm being an asshole right now. Yeah, well, you're talking directly to the person that hits you up. So what? You're talking directly to the person that hits you up. Yeah. I love that you don't hit me up anymore. <laughs> I'm kidding. But, like, there is a lot. Like, people, like I, I do this, too. I'm guilty of it, too. Like, just sending an email that doesn't really, like, achieve anything just to make me feel like I did something today. Yes. You know what I mean? There's so much of that shit in the world and in the... There's so many jobs that just, like, don't really do anything they just email you know again i'm being an asshole but um i was thinking about email the other day it's like email you, you know you have an email in your account or in your inbox in your inbox in your account what the fuck in your inbox right you're looking at it and you reply to it and you feel really good because you're like fuck yeah i did this this was in my inbox i had to deal with it and now i've dealt with it but then the person replies. That's the worst. You know what I mean? <laughs> you're like, you just erased all the work I did. Now I'm back at square one. Ugh. 
Anyways. So yeah, there's no bullshit. And it's amazing. But now I'm sort of starting to like dip my toes into work again. I'm sort of getting some, the messages are kind of leaking in. Leaking in. What's your inbox number? From the Mazads hitting me up, you know? Yeah. Hey, have you thought about this? No, go away. Go away. I'm I'm caring for my child. I don't want any of this shit. It's a good problem to have. Because I've also been in situations where nobody hits you up, you know? Yeah. There was a time where, like, when uh, when Vine started dying, like, a lot of shit was happening for me when Vine was, like, taking taking off, you know? And then when Vine started dying and then it got deleted, there was this period where, like, no, nothing, no work, like, no gigs, nothing, like, no emails, nothing. And I was like, I just want somebody to email me. So I've been through periods like that. And it's a good problem to have that people want you to respond to them. So I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. I'm still pretty sleep deprived, but I am adapting. Should I read the second card and then we'll talk about dad life? Roses are red. Oh, this one's from Kenny. Roses are red. Violets are blue. This corner chair is so lonely without you. You're doing the pod solo, but you're not a loner. Although I'm upset I won't be there for the ad read about boners. I would say I'm fine, but that'd be a lie. I've been locked in the studio for months, and I don't want to die. <laughs> okay, that's grim. A little dark there at the end. <laughs> See, this is what happens when you cold turkey boner pills. <laughs> He's just stopped. <laughs> you just get you just get a weird mental headspace, you know. Just locked in the studio. Yeah. Um. Okay, so you're saying you're well, adapting to. Yeah, yeah. So first of all, I want to get this out of the way because. It's a good segue. While well, we have these cards in front of us, I'm but obsessed with you. you can buy at you. TMGstudios.tv. You can buy these, although I don't know. I guess these are great for like an anniversary. Mm-hmm. Today's Valentine's Day. I forgot to mention that. That's probably why you saw the Cupid run around in the background there. Um, it's a day of love. And so you can buy those cards if you want to express your love for someone in your life at another time. Because Valentine's Day will have long been since passed. Two days ago. Two days ago. But anyways, yeah, you can express your love for someone with these cards, TeamGStudios.tv, and they're part of the merch that was released for Brooke's new show, which is called Obsessed. And I just want to commend Brooke and everyone on the team for what a launch that was. I think people are really enjoying the show. And, uh, well, first of all, I want to congratulate Brooke and Connor. They've just been killing it. It's so cool to see how many people, like how the show is growing and how... They're just, you know, like Connor is selling out shows for stand up, and Brooke is launching new podcasts that are. She was number seven, I think, or on the overall charts on Spotify for launch. It was like Joe Rogan, fucking uh, Huberman. Huberman, and then it was like Brooke, which is just so cool to see. Like people just, people just really resonate with them and they love their comedy and they should they're fucking hilarious so it's really cool to see their hard work pay off and also like our work on the shows um so just really proud of that and so check just want to say a big congrats to brooke and uh check out her new show and uh congrats to brooke and connor as well on their continued success on their show so um yeah okay so I wanted to talk about a little bit about um, dad life two weeks later. So two weeks ago, now it's been over a month. And it's funny. What The one consistent thing that seems to be always, well, the one consistent thing I would say is inconsistency. And like that's what we're learning is that like, Every couple days, we're like, oh, I think we're starting to figure this out. Oh, he likes it when we heat the bottle up to this, and then we right when he's done, we put him on his stomach, and that's when he doesn't seem to spit up as much, and that's when he seems to be less fussy. And then two days later, it just completely changes, and we're like, no, wait, he likes to be on his back. That seems to be the thing that is just so... So now we're like, we don't even bother with like, we're, we're figuring it out. Mm. You know, we're just like, oh, today was a good day. Tomorrow, we'll see what it's like, you know, which is, which is funny when you sort of recognize that. And they're like, we are figuring some things out for sure, but 
for the most part, like we had an amazing day yesterday. He was so kind of calm all day and was sleeping. And I, I had him on my chest for like two hours. That's the best feeling in the world, by the way, when you're laying down right here and he's just sleeping right here. It's the best feeling in the world. And so we're like, oh my God. And then we went out for dinner with my mom and my aunts are in town and he was a dream the whole time. And we're like, he's really start- oh, this- Look at this. <laughs> Speak of the devil. Wow. What are you doing? Jilly, come here. Come here, buddy. Come here. Oh, never mind. Bye. He's like, did you guys see that fucker in the red suit? <laughs> uh, yeah. I've, uh, no. I don't know. Did I feed him? What day is it? <laughs> you want to come say hi? Hello. Hello. Here, ladies and gentlemen. Here, you want to say something? You want to say something? <laughs> there you go. That's what... That's... What Chili has to say. You want to come say hi? What? Can we see if Otis will say something? Oh, wait. Hey, buddy. There you go. There, hey, he guys. Said hi. He said hi. It's me. And Kelsey's here. Hi, sorry I'm interrupting. I was just talking about how uh, we were talking with our friends about, because they have a child that's about to turn one year, and so they're kind of like, you know, what, 11 months ahead of us, but um, they're like, you know, new parents as well, and so we kind of confide in them about what we're going through, and we were joking about how like every day, well, we think we've like figured something out, like we'll be like, oh, wait. Oh, he really likes being on his stomach like this mm-hmm. at this specific angle after we feed him. And like, we're, I don't know. We're just trying to figure out. And then the, and then like last night he just cried for like two and a half, three hours. It was not. Sorry. It was three four hours. five hours. Probably. <laughs> it was probably like an hour. It was more than an hour. Definitely. Hour and a half at least. Yeah. But like he had just eaten too and then we changed him and like nonstop was just, and we were like, what? No, I think I figured out what it was though. What? I think he just had to poop. He's been way See, better. That's what I'm talking about. He's been way better right? today. They're like, oh, that's what it was. So when he has to poop and then. He didn't poop. He hadn't pooped for a couple of days. Yeah, no, that's true. And then he. And he pooped big time. Oh, big time. Twice. Twice. Jinx. It was so funny. When? What time was that that we put him down? And then we're both lying in bed and we just hear <laughs> And Kelsey's like, Cody, listen. He's pooping again. And sure yeah, enough, that was probably was. like, I don't know, seven thirty. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Everything. I have just, no idea. Everything I don't even know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know either. <laughs> I don't know what I look like right now. You look this amazing. Is, thank you. You look beautiful. Thanks, um, guys. We're taking a quick break to thank another sponsor of today's episode, which is, of course, Harry's. One of the big things I have in common with Harry's is that we both don't appreciate getting ripped off. They saw customers getting screwed over by questionable overpriced shaving products and decided to do something better. Instead of charging the same stupid high prices, Harry's found their own way to make beautifully designed razors for a fraction of the price of other big brands. Exceptional products, honest prices, that's Harry's, baby. I love a good close shave, and when Harry's sent me a trial set, it did not disappoint. Harry's delivers a real quality shave each time. Get a five-blade razor, weighted handle, foaming shave gel, and a travel cover for just three bucks at harrys.com slash chill. Harry's has the highest customer satisfaction in the shaving industry. It's a no-risk trial. Don't like your shave? No worries. It's on them. Harry's even offers a convenient subscription option that you can cancel at any time. So, remember, getting ripped off is not funny. Switch to Harry's. Get started with a $13 trial set for just 3 bucks at harrys.com slash chill. That's harrys, H-A-R-R-Y-S, dot com slash chill for a $3 trial set. This episode is sponsored by... Blue Chew, baby. It's been way too long since I've been able to promote massive erections here on Insanely Chill, but we're back and we're bigger than ever. And if you're in the market for one, an erection that is, check out bluechew.com. 
Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. I really hope you're not concerned about what time of day you can take them because Blue Chew wants you to know that you can take their tablets at any time. The process is simple. Sign up at bluechew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days, and then you can start delivering packages to other people. The best part, it's all done online. So no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and, sh- and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. Mine was labeled Cody's Special Penis Blood Engorging Tablets in thick Sharpie. Subtle. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at bluechew.com. Chew it and do it. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code INSANE at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com. Promo code INSANE to receive your first month free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring this podcast. Um, but yeah, everything is everything is good today. He's chilling so far. Yeah. No, he's been, he's I been amazing today. I, I haven't I, I, figured out the the carrier, like how to put it on myself, like the front one. So when Chili was like whining to go out, sorry, my first time podcast. <laughs> yeah, this is the same mic you used too. <laughs> I got nervous um, when Chili was whining to go out. I didn't know what else to do, so I just put him in his car seat. But I can't hold Chili and the car seat at the same. <laughs> no, time. you did it. You did pretty well. I was struggling. I do need to figure out the carrier though. So. He really like, I think the first time I used the carrier, he liked it and he was sleeping peacefully. And then we tried like two or three times after that and he would just like go crazy. But today and yesterday I was able to put him in there. And when he's chilling in the carrier, it's the best because you can just go about your day yeah. and just do shit. And he's just like snoozing. And he's like near you. So it's nice. I know it is nice. Um, But I can't do it myself. Like I need to figure out how to put it on when I'm alone uh what else is just while you're here yeah any other (laughs) uh insights about parenthood um i do think it's funny how every (laughs) every morning we wake up and i'm like that was a horrible night he woke up so much and you're like no he didn't it was the exact same as last night that is i'm like i go back through the do we have like analytics on our like little baby camera uh, you will too. Every camera has them. <laughs> and no, it's helpful. awesome because it like records you like when you take them out and when you put them in so you know exactly like what the intervals were and trust me, you're you're going to absolutely utilize that. But it's always like, no, he woke up like twice. Or no, last night was three times because uh, it, of the crying at night. Yeah, there was, last night was odd. But for the most part, it was the same. Yeah. Aw. Uh, he might want to sit with you. That's fine. He can totally sit out here. He's been, Chili's been. Really acting, good boy. A little bit strange. He's acting a little strange. Like, like first time ever that sometimes we put food in front of him and he like won't just right go for it. It'll kind of take some like coaxing, which is weird. I think he's like a little bit, we're not like doing anything intentionally, but we're just paying a lot of attention to the baby. So, and I think he just notices that and we don't notice it as much. We still are like very loving to him and we do things with him. We try to take him out as much as we can, but I just think he notices the, the difference, you know? Sorry. But he's been a really good boy. And I'm probably going to leave You're a good boy. Because he's crying. Okay. Sorry, I wish I could stay. Maybe next time. Anything else to stay? I love you guys. Miss you guys. Any other funny things? Funny stories? No, because he's crying okay. and I <laughs> want to go inside. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> Thank you, though. Next time. Next time, I'll think of that. Love you. Love you. Ryan, happy Valentine's Day. Thank you. Happy Valentine's Good to see you. Good to see you. Goodbye. Kelly's a good man. So there he was. That's Otis's first podcast. You can kind of tell he's going to be a star already. (laughs) Totally. Totally Otis. (laughs) 
That's what it's going to be called. <laughs> totally Otis. It sounds like a Disney Channel show or something. Welcome back to Totally Otis. <laughs> oh. Yeah, so we jinxed it there. We're like, he's being really great today. He's being awesome. He's sleeping in his carrier all nicely. And then he's like, he hears that. And he's like, oh, you think I've been good today? Okay, well, check this out. How about this shit for a second? It's so funny how much the crying is like a pressure point in your brain. And it's funny. There's like a, there's like a threshold. It's like, 20, 30 seconds of crying, you can deal with it. It's just crying. It's just a loud noise. Whatever. You can deal with it. And then after that, you just start to be like, I need to fix this problem. It's crazy. You're like designed to like hate it so that you like want to stop it, you know? But it's like, it's like, it's not like rage. It's like just this, like, it's like someone is pinching your brain. (laughs) And you're just like, I know. And the thing is like the bottle warmer it takes five minutes, oh. which doesn't seem like a long time, but it is an eternity when someone is pinching your brain. You're like, come on, you're just looking at the thing like, please, please, please just end like the bottle warmer. You know, you're like, just heat the fucking thing up so that this guy will stop crying. So every time they want to eat, they cry? I don't know. That That's, I mean, he does, yes. For sure. He definitely does. He's like his dad. What? He's like his dad. Why? (laughs) Yeah, we definitely have that in common. But, uh, yeah, I talked last time about how, you know, TikTok was kind of sort of like a cancer, like the newborn TikTok, because it just kind of makes you feel like shit. And I just had that revelation again last night as he's crying. Kelsey was holding him. And I was on TikTok for a second. And we were, we, were like, we were like switching off, basically. It was like every like 10 minutes, we'd I'd pick him up and carry him around the living room. And cause we're just trying to like coke, like trying to like just make him feel better, you know, because he had already eaten. He'd already, we'd already changed him and everything. And so while she had him, I was on TikTok and I scrolled to one of these like a morning in my life with my newborn. And it's just like so peaceful. And she like takes the baby out of the bassinet. He's not crying. And he like, he, she like puts him on his like little play mat and they do tummy time. And she's like reading to him. And then she goes and like makes coffee. And it's just like, just, just like so peaceful. And I'm like, looking at this, I'm like, are we doing something wrong? But it makes you feel like shit. Cause you're like, why isn't, what, what, what are we doing wrong? You know? But it's just like every every baby is so different, yeah. and I'm sure that they ha- they just show the good parts, you know. I hate that. I want like a real every fucking every all the content I see for newborns is like that. It's all people just have a tendency to only show the good things because they want to make themselves seem. I mean, I'm, this is not a hot take. Obviously, the influencers have been doing this for fucking ever. But it's like even when you're in the throes of of newborn period where your life is hectic why why not show that well we'll make sure to keep otis crying in yeah exactly yeah one thing i guess like now that i'm getting back into work a little bit is uh how like it just really makes you like actually think about what actually is important like what you actually have to get done yeah so much shit when you don't have kids where you're just like oh i'll go do this bullshit thing that just eats up time because why not? Like, you know, whatever I have time to do to work out later. And then you, now that like, (laughs) there's like a three hour max period where I have to like work out or do whatever. And I'm like, Hey, what is it today that I have to do? But then even that it's like, those get fucked up. And then it's like, everyone says like, go easier on yourself in this time. And I think that's pretty, a pretty good piece of advice. Cause you do start to feel like shit. At least for me, I like to be busy. I like to like feel like I'm getting shit done. And when I go three days without running, I'm like, you're a piece of shit. You're a fucking tub of lard. That's what I tell myself, you know? Get out there and get moving. But it's like, no. Go easier on yourself. Yeah, go easy on yourself. You're a small tub of lard. You're not a big tub of lard, you know? 
my family was in town uh and my sister has a has a small baby as well he's like three and a half months so the cousins got to hang out that's cool that was pretty cool and so like we would lay them on the bed next to each other and of course like they have no fucking idea what's going on (laughs) but they would just they do this and then they touch hands by accident and we'd be like, they're holding hands. <laughs> oh, they're fucking, they're boys. I knew they'd be boys. I knew these two would fuck with each other. <laughs> oh, they're bros already. I fucking knew it. <laughs> yeah, it's so doubt. funny. That's so funny. But we're, yeah, we're, we're stoked. Kelsey took the funniest the cutest picture of him together because it was his one month birthday so we were like you know everyone does those pictures with the little the little fucking board and yeah he, it's the same it's like the same in the same vein as the all the other content is like yeah. everyone makes like the like the nursery looks fucking perfect and then the baby is sat there with mm-hmm. the perfect little outfit and it says one month so she took a napkin and drew one month on it and <laughs> set it beside him and he was sitting there like <laughs> said one month it was awesome um okay what else did i have to say what else has been going on okay i could do a little Mad Men update i guess that was on the list well no i'll say this i did i went out and i did the probably the worst thing that you could do when you just have a baby and that is buy a vintage car. <laughs> I actually can't wait to tell Noel this. Oh, by the way, next week I'll be back on TMG. Remotely. I'm coming back. I'm doing it remotely. I'm doing it from here. Unless you want to come in. Uh, and I'm not coming in. Okay. No, I'm not coming in. Because also we're trying to be kind of careful about like being around many people and stuff. Fair. So many sicknesses going on right now. I know. My My family was in town. As soon as they left, they all got the flu. Really? And we're like, thank fucking God they didn't get it when they were here. Holy shit. Um, Listeria? What? Listeria is going around and the sauce. Listeria? 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 It sounds like a song, doesn't it? It sounds like Listeria. a weekend song or something. Um, yeah, Listeria. I don't know what the fuck that is, but I don't want it. No. I don't want, I don't want my baby getting it, you know? Same. My wife. My sister's kid got sick. He's, you know, he's a, he's a little bit older, so it was not as much of a worry, but like, when kids get sick, their ears get fucked up and they can't lie down. So he's just standing all night crying. Just sounds like hell. So, um, and and when newborns get sick, it's a way more serious deal, you know. So, um, yeah. Anyways, that's like part of the reason why I don't want to go in the, into the studio. I know some people are like wondering, like, why don't you just go? You know, why don't you just go and be in? Just do it. That was a co- we got a couple comments that were like. Newborns aren't that much work. Just go, just start. Dude, we miss the videos, man. Just keep, we miss the things. Shut up. Anyone that starts a sentence with newborns aren't that much work, get yeah. fucked. Yeah, get fucked. Maybe for the people on TikTok with their perfect little lives. Yeah, for you it's not, maybe. A day in my life with my little newborn, <laughs> and then I did Pilates, and then I made myself some coffee, and then I'm like, where's the fucking baby during all this? probably with the nanny that you're not showing right it has to be i think we'll get a nanny eventually right now we're just beasting at ourselves but i think eventually i'm gonna have to fucking get back to work full time so um okay so what was i saying well speaking of- oh vintage car okay so i went out so yeah so kelsey was still pregnant and TMG telling Noel, we're, we're backtracking here, we're folks. Back. We are back at where I started. So I can't wait to tell Noel this. I actually already told him. I texted him. I texted him a picture of the car and I said, check out my new car. And uh, which is cool because, you know, we talked a little, you know, we we talked shop a little bit about the car and, you know, it's pretty nice. I'm like, I'm a car guy now. I've always liked older cars. Like my dad and I would watch these like rat rod shows you know, on like the fucking car channel or whatever. And like growing up and he still watches a lot of those. And, uh, we would go to car shows and stuff like that. He always had really cool cars growing up. He had a, he had a 
Land Rover Defender in Calgary. I th- did I say that? Have I said this before? I haven't. Heard Maybe that. with Noel, like on the actual episode, but he had a Land Rover Defender, a yellow one in Calgary. It was a soft top. That thing was a fucking nightmare in the winter, but we would drive it every day to practice for my diving practice. We would drive half an hour to the pool, both bundled up in winter jackets because it's a fucking soft top and minus 40 degrees Celsius. But that car was so sick. You know Defender? Mm-hmm. The original one. Yeah. Bright yellow. So cool. He had a Hummer. He had an H1. A purple H1. It's a bumpy ride. And I told, I, I definitely told him all this on the show before, but it had a 12-inch sub. And my sister and I were like six years old or something. And we were sitting <laughs> on either side of the subs. On the either side of the sub, which was in the middle. And we'd just be like... <laughs> and then it got... We went off-roading one time and it got stuck. That was pretty pretty funny. Uh, he had an NSX... Um, which is a really cool car. We used to blast Led Zeppelin in that car. So a lot of, I have a lot of fond memories. And then, and then like my dad, we got the Honda Element and then the Sound XB. They always like really liked kind of quirky cars. So I kind of have that. I'm not a car guy, but I appreciate cool cars that are unique. So I've always wanted a Bronco. Obviously they're a very popular car. I was like, you know, 75 Bronco. You know, they go for like 100K. They're like unbelievably expensive if they're like, you know, completely redone. But I just, I really like old Broncos, as does a lot of people. And we went out for lunch and there was a Bronco parked in the uh, the parking lot. It was a little bit newer of a Bronco. So I think like the most sought after years are like 72 to 75 or something like that. Or like 72 to 80 or something, I think. This was an 89 Bronco, and there was a for sale sign in the window, and it looks super sick. Um, really cool color. It's like blue and white. It just looks 80s and cool. And and the price was like pretty decent because it's a less sought-after year. So I called her. Turns out she's a super, super awesome chick. She lives locally, and she was like, I wanted to sell it to somebody in the neighborhood. And so I like have it had a safety check on it on it and everything and it's like in in really great condition so i bought it and then like right after we had the baby and i'm like so i haven't driven it (laughs) it's been a month because i'm like i don't i'm never driving alone i haven't driven alone i think i've been to starbucks like one time to get coffee for us you didn't take your bronco no because i don't think we had it yet it was in the shop for a little bit getting repairs um so yeah and i i don't know like i you know, I did like the cognitive dissonance thing where you're like, you like kind of convince yourself, I can put a car seat in this thing because I wanted it, you know? And in the back of my mind, I'm like, I don't know if you can put a car seat in this thing, but I'm like, you can. You can put a car seat in any car, you you know. Safely is another question. Safely, yeah, exactly. So I think I'm going to figure out a safe way to put a car seat in there and then we'll take it. But um, it's a really cool car and I like it a lot. And... um it's just the stupidest purchase to make now. And also it's it's my first like truck. It feels good to be like high up and it's a small truck obviously compared to the trucks now, but it just feels good, you know. It's cool. Fucking drive around this thing, you know. Yeah, throw it in the back. <laughs> <laughs> you can do that with your current car. <laughs> throw it in the back. I don't have a trunk in my car. No, I'm kidding, I do. I'm joking. No, but it's a truck, you know? You're, like, driving around. Like, uh, you're higher. You know what I mean? So that's the feeling right there. Get my gun. You know, I got a gun in there. No. <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't have a gun. I don't drive around with a gun. <laughs> I can't even think I can buy a gun. I'm not a citizen. Right? It's probably one of the prerequisites for having a gun. Probably, but... I'm from Oklahoma. You can get yourself a gun if you want a gun. Yeah, that's in Oklahoma. Yeah. Things are done a little bit differently around here. <laughs> that's one of the best Nate Bargatze jokes. When he's talking about, like, he goes to Sportsman in, uh, I think it was Sportsman or whatever. It's like the big, like, multi-story sports store that's, like, everything sports you can imagine, but then also, like, fishing gear and then also just tons of guns. <laughs> he's like, I was just riding down the escalator with a fucking gun. And they're like, they don't even, uh, uh, what did he say? Fuck, I'm going to butcher it. Oh, I forget it. I forget what he said. It's so funny, though. He's definitely my favorite oh, yeah. comedian. Top. He's so fucking good. 
So yeah, vintage Bronco. I'm a cool guy now. I got a vintage car. I went out for my first long run. So the things are like kind of getting back on track a little bit. Like I think, I don't know. It feels like we're sort of figuring things out a little bit in terms of like time that we can spend doing things, you know, knock on wood. But like I went for a long run and uh, I think we're more comfortable now like taking care of him like alone, you know. So she can do things like when he's in the carrier, she can work and then she'll take him and I'll go out for a run. So that's really nice. So like things are, and I'll film a video. So like starting to get back into it a little bit, which has been cool. Um, I just cannot, cannot wait for him to be old enough where I can take him in the carrier and like go on a hike or like I got my sister a running stroller and so we we went for a run with her kid. Yeah. Yeah. It was awesome. So I can't wait to actually like start bringing him out and doing the things that I like to do, but with him. Do you have a running stroller? Not yet. I'm going to buy one though. He's just not old enough. Speaking of strollers. Yeah. What do you even, how do you even make the decision? Vista, the upper baby Vista. It's the best one. No. Everyone says that. I'm really? Sure Why do you like it so much? I don't like it that much. It's just the one that everyone says to get. <laughs> I mean, you guys went to Baby List. We were there last weekend. And yeah. It's like, it's just overwhelming. That's what I told you. I said, it's going to feel really <laughs> you overwhelming. You did. You were like, you were like, don't let it be overwhelming. Yeah. I got there. And I was like, yeah. this is overwhelming. Oh, no, it's so funny. They're like, you go into that like fake kitchen of theirs and they just have every appliance and you're like, does mine have to look like this? What is this? <laughs> this is a bottle sterilizer. For the, for a toaster oven. <laughs> like what? Like, yeah. You ever want to make a bagel and sterilize a bottle at the same time? Cause you're going to need to do that. You're going to need, and you're like, you don't know what it like, it's going to be like. So you're like, I guess I need to do that. I mean, yeah, this is, it sterilizes the bottle and then you put the bagel on top of the bottle and it'll toast the bagel while it's sterilizing the bottle. It does it all in one. So, and you're going to need that because you won't have any time to make bagels. So you're like, okay, fucking, I guess I need that. And it's for your car. <laughs> There's an adapter. It's an adapter. But you need to buy a car seat for it. For the sterilizer? Well, yeah, if you want to make bagels in your car and sterilize bottles, I mean, you're going to need that. You don't have a lot of time. You you don't know what life is going to be like, all right? You're going to have no time. So if you want to go somewhere and make a bagel and sterilize a bottle at the same time, <laughs> safely, because otherwise, you know, this thing's going to be bouncing around your car. You need to get a car seat for it. You don't want your baby to die. Which has a charging it. adapter yeah. for... Your snoo <laughs> for the car. You need a snoo for the car. Right. You should buy a snoo for the car. Yeah. The snoo is $1,600. You have to get a second one for your car. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. So it is It is very overwhelming. But you realize what you actually need when you first have a baby is a changing table. That's it. Okay. And like a bottle. But not even that. Because most, I mean, if she's breastfeeding, right. you it's a changing table and some pajamas for him and diapers. Well, then we went way overkill. No, but like that's like <laughs> I, I say that to, to make you feel better. Like that is like the actual essentials. Yeah. All the other things are like make your life better and are nice to have, and you're gonna need them eventually. But in the beginning, when they're nursing, all they do is they nurse, they you change them and then they sleep. So yeah, uh, and then you kind of figure out the other things. Like we've bought a ton of shit just like after the fact because we're like, oh, these burp cloths are really good. Let's just get more of those. And mm, mm. Uh, and like I said, I'll send you the list of stuff. But yeah yeah so the stroller that one is just everyone says uh, everyone has it like it's all the ones that all like the i don't know people i see on tiktok and stuff they have it and the thing with the strollers you have to like stick with the brand because they all make their special adapters with the special car seat with the special stroller no you can get unless all the brands for the car seats make an adapter for all the strollers oh for all (laughs) so our car seat is a different brand but they, we got the adapter for the Vista so that we can snap it in. And then we actually just bought an adapter so that we can put a bassinet and have him in it too. So we're figuring this shit out, man. And if you have any stroller questions, hit me up. Because I'm thinking about this shit nonstop. <laughs> we're taking a quick break, guys, to thank the sponsor of today's episode, which is HelloFresh. And he, Chili, Chili loves it. He loves it. He can't stop barking about this shit. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. And that's why it's America's number one meal kit. Whether you're trying to save money, eat better, 
or stress less or all of the above. HelloFresh is here to help you do all three. Say hello to your most delicious year yet with fresh ingredients and chef-crafted recipes at a price you'll love delivered right to your door. No more staring blankly in the fridge wondering what to make for dinner. This is you. Um, what are we going to have for... That's you. No more of that, okay? Give HelloFresh a try and dig into their biggest menu yet with over 45 recipes to choose from each week. Obviously, you know, I've been a little busy lately, so uh, I have almost no time to cook, uh, which is why my absolute favorite, the Bibimbap Bowl is extra appreciated as a new dad. So go to hellofresh.com slash insane free and use code insane free for free breakfast for life. One, one breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life available for a limited time at hellofresh.com slash insane free with code insane free. It is highly encouraged to voice the following HelloFresh tagline, America's number one meal kit. Guys, this show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Be honest. How have your relationships been lately? Have you been, you know, working on them at all? A common misconception about relationships is that they have to be easy or to be right. But sometimes the best ones happen when both people put in the work to make them great. Therapy can be a place to work through the challenges you face in all of your relationships, whether with friends, work, your significant other, or anyone. You know, I am someone that has given therapy a try and I really enjoyed it and I did work on my relationships in it. You know, it's nice sometimes I feel like you bottle a lot of shit inside and also it's like you have this idea of what things are supposed to be like and it's just a nice to use therapy as like a, a way to just get things off your chest but also then hear, oh, it's not abnormal what's happening, you know? People go through all sorts of stuff and this this is the way you deal with those things, you know? And if you're thinking of giving... Uh, therapy a try well you might as well give better help a try it's entirely online designed to be convenient flexible and suited to your schedule just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge so become your own soulmate whether you're looking for one or not visit betterhelp.com slash chill today to get 10 percent off your first month that's better help h-e-l-p.com slash chill um okay what else okay so mad men update um the show, so we're on the last season now. We're like episode eight or nine of the last season, so we're almost there. Got it. And I mean, the show is still incredible, but it's just still weird. It's like it's a weird show. Yeah, it's just weird. Like now, all of a sudden, Dawn is like in love with this random waitress. Like, what the fuck is that? How are you gonna end the show with that? This random character that he shows up. He's like, I think I know you, and then they fuck in an alley. And then all of a sudden they're like dating. And she's like, I abandoned my children. And you're like, what? Spoiler alert. <laughs> Spoiler alert. And you're like, do, do, aren't we supposed to be like tying up loose ends here? It's the, almost the end of the whole fucking show. We've been watching this. We've dedicated hundreds of hours, not hundreds, but maybe approaching 100 hours, 50 hours of our life to learning about all these characters and Don Draper and everything. And you're just going to introduce a new one fucking four episodes before the show ends? This random waitress. It's like I'm. It's like making me pissed off a little bit. I'm like, I want to know. Like what? Like, fucking, and then they. Spoiler alert! Fast forward, fifteen seconds. Cooper dying. Yeah, I know. A stab to the heart. Yeah. So they kill him off, and then they introduce this fucking waitress. It's like, <clears throat> but luckily, so after the last episode, luckily Don did go back to cheating on his wife. Thank God, order was restored in the universe. <laughs> no, but then they get a fucking divorce. Spoiler alert. So I, I still don't really, you know, I, I, last time I was like, well, the point of the show is like Don changing as a character and as a guy, but like maybe the point is that he stays the same. I'm not really sure. But uh, I'm still loving every second of that show. But it's just funny. I'm just... How is it going to end? I don't know. My dad said he does this big ad campaign. It's so funny. My parents and Kelsey's parents, we all went out for dinner together. and Or we had dinner here, actually. And we were talking about Mad Men. And I'm like, don't say anything. Please, don't ruin it. And they're like, 
we're not going to ruin it. We're not going to ruin it. Are you at the point yet where they do the big <laughs> ad campaign? Where like, stop talk, just stop talking. And they're like, we're not going to ruin it. And they're talking to each other. And they're like, right, like the part where they're blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, stop, fuck it, just, just zip, zip. And they're like, we're not going to ruin anything at all. We're not going to ruin it. And they would just ruin it. <laughs> I saw this funny TikTok. I don't know what the comedian's name is. I wish I could name drop him right now to give him a little credit, but the bit was like, like you're gr- it's so nice when you have a kid to see your parents become grandparents, but then you realize they're like someone that showed up at a job 30 years later without thinking they don't need any additional training <laughs> for the job. You know, yeah. Like maybe we could catch up with some stuff that's changed in the last thirty years. Like we don't need it. No, no, no. I'm good. Yeah, yeah. I've done this. Where's your teething rum? That was one of the ones. <laughs> that was pretty funny. <laughs> Fuck. Wish I could shout that guy out. Hold on, I sent. Here it is. Ivan Decker. That's his name. I thought that was pretty funny. It's funny. No, the in-laws have been great, and my parents have been great as well. And uh, that was another thing Kelsey and I did. We went on our first date. So we got away. Kelsey's parents watched Otis for a couple hours, and we went out for a little steak, a little That's lobster. Nice. It was kind of nice, but uh, we just looked at pictures of him the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, we were like, we, isn't that fucking crazy? We did that. Look at it. Look at it, this one. It was like we've seen all these pictures. We took the fucking pictures, and we're just looking at it like, oh my god, this isn't he great? I can't wait to get back. And then we went to my friends were at uh, a bar in Santa Monica, so we went out there and met them for a drink. Just like, oh, well, we're cool again. Look at this night on the night on the town. People, look at us. We're cool. Woody and Kelsey are out again. There. Yeah, and we we met up with our friends. They're like, holy fuck. Like, hey, we're here. <laughs> You want to see a picture of my son? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about the Uppa baby? Yeah, we're cool. What are you guys talking about, Hinge? <laughs> talking about the hinges on the Uppa baby? <laughs> Some great hinges on that. I love it. You can fold it up and stick it right in the trunk. It's great. That's such a shitty joke. <laughs> that was a good. That was a good dad joke. That was a really good dad joke. You really Raya, huh? Well, I love the Vista <laughs> Uppa baby. That thing is my favorite stroller. Fucking so bad. <sighs> well, I love. Nope. It's gonna do it in a Scooby Doo voice. <laughs> nah. You do voices. Do I do voices? To Otis. Well, he kind of anything I do to him, he looks at me like this. <laughs> So it's like, I don't know if he's really appreciating my efforts at this point, you know? It's like, why well, even bother? I try to, I try to like do the dad shit. I'll like blow a little raspberry on his stomach. And be... <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, do you even realize I'm being a cool dad right now? I'm like doing the dad shit, you know? I'll dance for him. <laughs> and I'll like snarl. And I'm like, what is that? Give me a little smile. I want to see a little something. <laughs> You know what's cool is we, because we're like, there's no like evidence that he can see yet. We're like, what if he can't see? And, but we have these like real, they can only see like black and white at this age or something. So things with sharp contrast. And so we have these little cards that are black and white and like, they're like Rorschach tests basically, sort of. But they're just like, you know, these sharp contrasty images. And we put one in front of his face yesterday and we moved it and he tracked it with his eyes. And we're like, let's fucking go. He can see. That's our boy. <laughs> and then he goes back. Like, <laughs> <laughs> the cross eye is so funny. <laughs> they have to warn you. They're like, they're going to, cr- the nurses in the hospital is like, they cross their eyes a lot. Don't be alarmed by it. But they really do. The Half the time, they're like, it's pretty funny. <laughs> oh, it's just a joy, man. Every second, honestly. And then it's, and then it's a little bit of hell. And then it's, absolute peak joy and then it's like pinching your brain you know it's someone what's the what's the therapy with the needles acupuncture yeah someone acupuncturing your brain sometimes and then it's just heaven you know 
and that's what it's all about and i'm just it's it's amazing like the last 11 months have just been emotions that i remember i asked you on insanely chill a couple months ago like are you nervous and you said or maybe we were just talking and you said it's different like every day i go through like sometimes i'm nervous sometimes i'm excited sometimes i'm really stoked sometimes i'm like and that's what i feel now i think about that often because it's like sometimes i'm like really excited and sometimes i'm like holy fuck like what's about to happen but it's like it's still going it seems like you have this yeah yeah less less like like, i guess there's less like uncertainty now in terms of like we're just in it yeah you know you there's a lot of that sort of like that ambiguity the ambiguity sort of and like the uncertainty before something big happens that you know this like change in your life is coming and you're like what's it going to be like that that causes a lot of cortisol i feel like Mm. that can be like pretty overwhelming but then when you're in the deep end your only concern is how how am i dealing with this right now right right at this moment you know and that's less stressful weirdly enough i feel like Mm. because you're you're just like hey let's solve these problems let's figure it figure this out right now and uh it is sometimes it's like well well, I can't go for a run now. It's like, well, let's figure it out. Let's do shifts. Like, how are we going to figure this out, you know? Mm. So, I mean, I wouldn't say it's less stressful, but it's just a different kind of stress. And mm-hmm. it's, I feel like it's a little bit more, I, I find sometimes that the, at least during the pregnancy, it's like the anticipation and like the, like I said, the uncertainty was just more overwhelming than this is. Mm. And there's just so many highs right now. That's what it sounds like. Like right, even right before we came out here, he was just sitting there like being perfect. And he did like maybe cracked a little smile. Both of us were like sort of like playing with him and he kind of went like this. And we were just like, that's so cool. Or even the eye tracking thing, just seeing him change day by day and develop. We're like, it's just amazing. And, uh, like, I just can't wait to, like, go do things for the first time with him. Yeah. He's still not walking yet, though? He's still not walking, no. He's, we're working on that. Uh, the big game happened. And uh, <clears throat> two things that I want to say about the Super Bowl. One is I won big. I don't want you guys to think about think about me any differently. I'm still kind of the same guy. I'm just a lot richer now. 900 bucks to be exact. And I'm very happy about that. And I just thought it was funny because I, I, the Chiefs won. I was like, oh my God. And then I go to my betting app because I'm like, I don't know what I got the under at. First of all, I bet like a week in advance. I got the under at 47 and a half. The total points was 47. I was going to say, what were the points? You're 47. Yeah. yeah. And that was in a parlay with the Chiefs winning. So I, that was the big one that I hit. And then I bet the under individually at like later in the week and I got it at 47. So that was a push. And then I bet on them winning individually and I hit that. Damn. So I look at the betting app. I'm like, holy fuck. Ha! I'm like ecstatic, right? I'm not, by the way, I'm not condoning sports betting at all. I do it. I'm a fucking degenerate. If we have an ad read, we might be condoning it. We don't know. Yeah, if we have an ad read for a betting app, then I'm absolutely condoning it, being paid to do so. Um, no, but I just, I just mean, <laughs> I don't know. Sports betting is like starting to become like a fucking epidemic. I know. Um, but and and this will be, I guess, I think this will be a good, you know, reason, maybe a good lesson for you not to do it. I look at Kelsey and I'm like, I just won. This is crazy. She's like, babe, I'm so happy for you. This is the first time I think you've ever won a bet. (laughs) I was like, what? No. She's like, no, I think this is the first time you've looked at me and said, I won. And I was like, is it? That's fucking bad. I've been betting for like a a year. I've had this account. (laughs) So, yikes. Uh, yeah, so I won 900 bucks or something like that. Or I think 500 maybe. But I think 900 in total, but I think I bet 300. I don't fucking remember, but I'm up big. 
So I'm going to spend all that on a new stroller, and I cannot wait. <laughs> and uh, another thing another thing I wanted to say is I'm a huge fan of the app Timu. <laughs> 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 the Chinese spyware app. <laughs> I love Timu. I saw about four ads for it, and I just couldn't help myself, so I downloaded that shit, and I just love it. I love all the products on there Stop and it. buying stuff on there. Stop. What? I love it. People it's are awesome. going to take you seriously. The deals on there? Oh, my God. Wasn't that wild? It's insane. What the fuck is Timu? I don't know. It's number one in the app store right now. Of course it Obviously, is. because they spent $50 million marketing it. Brooke and Connor talked about it today. Everybody's talking about it. What is it? What is it? Don't, no I don't idea. know, but I love it. <laughs> and I use it every day. I love Timu. <laughs> Stop. I love giving away all my personal information to China. I mean, I already do. I we all do. TikTok all day, yep. every day. It knows a lot about us. Yeah. There's a lot of dudes in the, I'm sure there's a whole team in the TikTok office you know, that are like, this dude just had a baby. <laughs> yeah. Let's make him feel like shit. <laughs> <laughs> Cue up those videos. But, you know, something something about TikTok. Actually, every social media. Facebook is the same way. It's the same thing. Facebook now, you know, I was like the first person, not really the first person, but like it's a meme now that people... People watch people die on Instagram. And remember when I talked about that? When I'm yeah. like, my friend keeps sending me these videos of people dying. Mm -hmm. Now it's a fucking meme because it's happening to everyone. <laughs> everyone is getting these videos of people dying in car crashes on Instagram. Oof. They're just getting worse and worse. It's just, it's just talk about fucking acupuncture in your brain. That's not really. You know, it's not really acupuncture. It's like you're fucking taking a bandsaw to your brain. You know? You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, that's all I had. Just huge fan of Timu was the last thing that I wanted to chat about. Uh, Kenny had written, you said you shot your first YouTube video in a while yesterday and you said you were rusty. I was rusty. What was that like? Bad. <laughs> I just haven't filmed in like two months now or something or a month and a half. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I was just rusty. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard to be funny for an hour. It's really, really fucking exhausting. It's really exhausting. Was it as exhausting before you guys had the baby? Yeah. Yeah, it's always been exhausting. Okay. I can't wait to not do it one day. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I really like it. I really like, because it's like a strength of mine. Like, I, I enjoy doing it. I really like filming YouTube videos and trying to make people laugh. And whenever I come up with a funny bit on the, on the you know, on the fly or like in the moment, I'm like, I feel good about that. But every time I film, I'm just, compl or, or do a podcast, for example, afterwards, I'm just completely and utterly drained. Mm. Um, and I think that uh, yeah, I don't know because I've I've read some things. People have been like, "Well, you just like fucking forty five minutes. You sit down, you film, and you send it off to an editor. You're not even really doing any work. It's fucking ridiculously exhausting. I will say that. And I'm not I'm not like this isn't a fucking like influencing is way harder than you think. I just will say that like trying to be on for an hour at least maybe for me because i think i'm more of an introvert it's just so fucking exhausting and i this is coming from someone who had a nine to five i was a software engineer i could code for eight hours straight and not be as tired as i am sometimes after i film mm. a youtube video or a podcast for example yeah just because you're just think trying to be sharp for an hour or even now like i'll sit down i'll produce i'll produce music for like five hours straight and some that's definitely tiring but like it's it's not as like looking at there's something specific about like looking at a camera and like trying to be aware of how you look, how you sound, what you're saying, how you're saying it, trying to be funny, thinking about like bits going off of what I just said, all this shit. Just so fucking exhausting. So uh that part, you kind of get used to that if you just do it a lot. If you don't, you kind of lose that 
uh, the, the fact that you're sort of adapted to that exhaustion a little bit. So I filmed for an hour yesterday and I was just like <laughs> afterwards, you know, but I did, I did miss it. Honestly, it's such a love hate thing with YouTube. You always see it. It's just since ever since the platform started, you know, YouTubers are always like, I'm off YouTube. I'm, I've on to better things. Yeah. And they always come crawling back. <laughs> Cause it's the thing. It's yeah. the thing. You know? It's the people love people love it. I love watching YouTube and I love making them. But it's the thing. So they always come crawling back. <laughs> I'm a movie star now. I don't need YouTube. Oh, you'll come crawling back one day. Timothy Chalamet is going to be. You will come. You'll be making that those Xbox, Xbox. review videos <laughs> again one day, Timothy. You will. Mark my words. You're going to come crawling back. Trust me, the fucking, the fame and recognition from Dune will only last so long. And then you're, and then what? You'll be doing some reviews <laughs> on YouTube of Xbox controllers. <laughs> That's an excellent dad joke. Thanks. Yeah, I got way more of those. You have really embraced it. That's the dad's job, you know? Yeah. You carry the car seat, you put the car seat in, you take it off, you put it in the stroller, change diapers, and then you got to fucking lighten the mood every once in a while, you know? That's the dad's job. Ah. Uh, we got enough. I'm so tired. <laughs> you just fall asleep at the end of the episode. Anything else? It's kind of hard, like, you know, there's not a lot of, like, trending, there's not a lot of, like, things in my life right now, or at least, like, pop culture things that I'm paying attention to. Yeah. But... I will say it's interesting how the more, okay, so like, I guess when social media started and everything, before we had social media, we had tabloids and paparazzi and everyone was paying attention to the same things and the same shows because everyone was watching them at the same time on cable and that's why Friends was so big. That's why they made so much money because everyone was paying attention to them at the same time because it's all we had. And then as soon as social media came around, Everyone, everything got so fragmented and everyone's like, well, everyone's watching different shows on different, different subscription networks now. But it's weird how the more things get fragmented, the more we pay attention to one thing. Like, and that is why Taylor Swift mm. and fucking Travis Kelsey is so big right now and Kim Kardashian is bigger than they've ever been is because the more things spread out, the more they also concentrate on one thing. Yeah. Isn't that funny? Like, It's interesting. I don't think fucking Michael Jackson was as famous as Taylor Swift is right now. I mean, that might be a completely incorrect statement. <laughs> yeah, I think people are gonna. I just shit that out of my ass. <laughs> I just fucking shit that take out of my pop butt. star that's ever lived. But I mean, you're. No, it's close. Taylor Swift is. Well, it's Michael Jackson was. It's, I don't know. He's it's close. But I just find that interesting. People are tracking her jets. Yeah. It's like. There was I, dude. I there there. I popped onto the the subreddit Taylor Swift Jets or something like that because it was just like I, I don't even know how I found it. It popped up on Twitter or something. And I clicked the link, went to the subreddit. So then once you go to a subreddit, then it appears on your algorithm all the time when you go on Reddit, which I don't go on ever, but I do go on it every day. And so the, a post popped up that was like Taylor Swift uh, is probably on this jet going to Tokyo. And then in the comments, there was a live stream on the landing strip that people were watching. No way. Anticipating her arrival. They were going to watch the live stream of her landing the jet in Tokyo. That They didn't even know for sure she was on because they sent like a decoy or something. Like, what the fuck is happening? And why am I watching this? <laughs> I'm part of the problem. Because yeah. I was kind of like, oh, interesting. Maybe I'll, I'll I'm gonna stick around for a little bit, see if she lands, you know? Let's see if she lands. If I was her, I'd be horrified. I don't know how she deals with it. <laughs> just someone tracking her every move. You can't even, even if like, you know, I, you know, like it, there's that little pot. You could just go off to a foreign 
country, start over, you know? Not her. Nope. No, she can't. There's going to be a live stream. <laughs> she can also fucking go to Costa Rica. You know, she, what if she murders somebody? What if Taylor Swift murders somebody? What if she murders somebody? And she's like, I'm just going to flee and start a new life. No, you can't. Sorry. It's pretty hard for anybody to do. What? It's kind of hard for anybody to do. To murder somebody? And then- no, I'm not condoning it. <laughs> By any means, I'm just saying, if she did and she wanted to <laughs> flee to a foreign country, she could not do that. There would be a live stream of her Taylor Swift. And, uh, Taylor Swift landing in Costa Rica in anticipation of her murder trial. She's playing. <laughs> She couldn't do it, so that's what I'm just saying. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's crazy to be her, you know? It's just crazy. The more people are like, the more people are like, uh, why do we care about all these celebrities and eat the rich? The more everyone pays attention to the same fucking people and fuels the problem. It's crazy. And that's another hot take that I just shit out of my butt right at you. So... I just find it interesting. I don't know. Like I just cannot fathom the level of fucking fame and attention that they are getting. It's insane. It's like there was about 5 million videos of them at the club in Vegas. From every fucking angle, it's like every person there had their phone out was filming them. Well, and if you're them, you have to be aware of like every all around you. There's cameras pointed at you. Yeah, I know. And it's like but there's still but it's like they're just she's make she makes great music, and he plays great football. But like that's it. It's crazy. Anyway, so, anyways, should... hot takes there. So, signing out. Vintage car dad. Signing out. Thanks for watching another episode. Hopefully, the shadow today. I think it was pretty penisy. <laughs> so I don't want to hear about it. Please, no comments. <laughs> I don't want to hear a single one. Do not write that. Do not say, oh, it looks like you're giving, looks like you're giving Shadow Dome. Don't say that. <laughs> shadow Dome. Um, Should we turn on a Taylor Swift stream? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Now I'm going to raid <laughs> Taylor Swift Jets landing pad stream that's going on right now. I'm just kidding around. Love you guys. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you. And uh, I'm going to go eat some lunch. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Let me know. Let me know what you want to hear next time. You know, I'll be here for the next couple episodes. So let me know if you want to see something, what you want to hear. I'd like to, I'd like to know that that would help me because I don't have a lot of shit going on right now in terms of things to talk about besides the baby. And uh, I also want to know maybe if you're getting bored of that. So let me know. See you next time. Goodbye.